Hey there, event marketers, Jessica Heasley here. Welcome to another episode of EM All Access, where we connect you with some of the industry's most innovative events and the marketers behind them. Today's episode is sponsored by GES, a global full service provider of live events. And it focuses on creating content at events. It's one of the hottest trends right now. Designing events as content factories and platforms on which attendees create and share their own experiences. I spoke with GES executives Mark Thomas, John Wu, and Jeff Youngs about the rise of content, the best ways to harness it, and where this red hot trend is headed. Let's listen in. It seems like events have become content generators for everything from TV ads to social media. I wonder if you could talk about the content trend as it relates to the event industry. Content has always been generated, right? I think content has been king for a long time. So I'm not sure if it's a new trend or just me a reemergence of people recognizing it again. Because I think there was a lot of experimentation that occurred about defining what an event is. Um, but ultimately, it goes back to the relevancy of the content, right? Like the content is the driver of the experience. It needs to drive the event. It needs to give it purpose. Um, and so what's interesting now is that when we start building experiences into these events, uh, it's actually creating more content to be um, shared because the audience members are like interacting with it. They're doing something different with it. They're pulling out what they need. And then now they're amplifying and broadcasting it out to other people. Technology and the web has made things so much more accessible that we can take things that have been created for general sessions or breakouts and put them online for a fee or for free, depending on the audience, but that, that can then help continue to create the community or the movement that's being created with the event between events. So that's out there and available to people. Looking at that content engine, it's not just specifically what happens from a podium microphone from a main stage, it's the entire experience. And, and creating that content is what's important to the attendee. That's what their takeaway is, so we have to be able to take that to the next level. We have to be able to make that important to that attendee. That's what has to evolve when a show evolves and how things happen. So getting the content right means getting the experience right. And that's not just breakouts and general sessions and expo. And it's, it's the spaces in between, it's, and it's how they all interact and come together. That, that is content and creates content in itself for the attendee. More and more you're seeing a non-traditional way of delivering content to the attendees, um, where it's always been, hey, here's the breakout, here's the general session, here's, say, the, um, uh, the sponsor space, where the sponsors are broadcasting their own mini pods of content, right? Um, I think now you're looking for that surprise and delight of delivering content in unexpected ways. And that content's in shorter bursts as well. It's not an hour and a half sitting behind a microphone at a general session. It could be a tabletop discussion of five people or ten people about a specific topic. So it's really evaluating what that content is and how it aligns with the audience. If you're working with a financial company, it might be a different delivery method. If you're working with a millennial crowd, it's a much different delivery method. So we have to adapt those delivery methods based on the crowd and the attendee to create that single experience. Yeah. Like for example, we took um, an idea of financial services, which is fairly dry, right? Talking about owning versus leasing. And we turned it into a foosball game. And we created a 16-foot foosball table and we overlaid what it really meant to lease versus own. <laughs> and we put in the financial services in there and we brought people in to work collaboratively to get the ball to the goal of being successfully managing your financial future. So it's taking, con you know, it's a different way of delivering the content in a more engaging type of learning experience. Epic events are built on little bits of micro content that are happening all throughout the entire experience of the event. And, and those little micro bits are the ones that work really well uh, as you send it out to the web and those kinds of places. It's kind of like these little programs we're creating here are short and sweet and to the point. Uh, same thing for content in, in an event. It's short, sweet, to the point, and easily carryable to another place for another thing. Yeah. And consumable. Consumable, yeah, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. This, you know, we want to be able to digest our information in Twitter by feeds now, right? Um, because also it has to stay memorable, right? How do you do that in a succinct way? You can always add more stuff to it, but it's harder to simplify a message. Uh, it's harder to simplify an experience so that it becomes much more um, easy for the person you're sharing it with to consume. Have attendees become the primary or the secondary 
sharers of this content. And with that in mind, how, are you creating events with that, thinking strategically about who's going to share it and how? It depends on, on the event, the audience, um, all, all of those things uh, impact whether they are a primary or a secondary uh, creator uh, of content. I mean, many events require the, uh, the participants to create crowdsource content. Um, and you know, what lives beyond the event is going to depend on the event and the audience that you're trying to reach. Yeah, and I think they actually wind up taking turns, right? Mm -hmm. Because um, you're trying to say one or the other, but throughout the entire life of the event, um, different moments in time pushes people into that seat, that driver's seat, right? Where they may be the primary um, content generator and the other time they're broadcasting it. So it does become very dynamic in that interaction and you kind of want that to occur because then it becomes a conversation. It's a conversation between the attendee and the message that you're trying to promote rather than always the one directional kind of um, broadcast and then amplification. So where do we think this content trend is headed? What's the next iteration or the evolution of event content? The content evolution is, is really going to be dependent on the attendee. How are they going to evolve? How are we going to adapt to what their needs are? How is technology changing for what the, the attendee is looking for? The way the content's being delivered is going to get shorter and shorter. It's like smaller bites, right? I, I actually think that not just because of the attention span, but also it's just simplification, right? Um, sometimes delivering a long um, keynote may be effective, but then I, I actually feel like it's getting more compressed. Like um, there's like a trend of making it so that it's easier to digest and easier to share. And I don't want to say sound bites or Twitter feeds, but you know, I think it's kind of pushing towards that. Everybody wants to do more of a, hey, here's my Pinterest board, right? And pull that out and show you what that is because it illustrates something more. Where before we would have a wall of information on a graph, now we have an infographic that tells you the same information, right? Instead of reading all the text. Um, People want it kind of spoon-fed to them sometimes when you're going through a lot of experiences because it helps you cut through the clutter, right? And we leverage design, we leverage design thinking, and we leverage human experiences to kind of help facilitate those conversations. So I think you're going to see more and more of that where content's being maybe carved up and delivered in different segments of time and sprinkled throughout the event rather than delivered all at once. Content has always been king in the event industry, but now it's becoming an even larger part of both the strategy and the long-term engagement between the brand and the customer. The right content drives an event and gives it purpose. And the best events drive content creation and distribution. I'd like to thank Mark, Jeff, and John for joining me, and you for watching. You can learn more about this episode's sponsor, GES, at ges.com and explore our growing library of EML access conversations and behind-the-scenes tours at eventmarketer.com.